Hi, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Small Talks with Centers for New Horizons. My name is Marquita Baltimore. I'm your lovely host this evening. And we're joined by our beautiful co-host, Miss Brianna Tyler. Hi, thank you for having me. No, no problem. Miss Tyler is a youth case manager at Centers for New Horizons. She has inside of Phillips High School and inside of the Lawless Building. And we'd like to welcome you guys and thank you for coming back in and spending this evening with us. We also want to make sure that you know that this is a live show broadcasting right now on CAN TV. You can call in with any questions, comments, or concern. Remember, no question is a stupid question. Area code 312-738-1060. Once again, also, we are Citizens for New Horizons. We're located at 4150 South King Drive. Chicago, Illinois, 60653, www.cnh.org is the website. We're also on Instagram and Twitter at the hashtag Centers 2.0 if you're looking for us for more information on anything we discussed this evening. So let's go ahead and get right to it. This evening, me and Brianna are here to talk to you guys about um, drug abuse and how it affects some of our teens in the community and um, some of the substances that they've been using and some popular trends that we see going on and some stats. And some of the things that Centers for New Horizons and other local community organizations are doing to combat some of these alarming numbers. So today, um, we're going to talk about the importance of recognizing the signs of drug abuse and also ways to help someone overcome their addiction. Um, so I know that we're constantly interacting with youth on a day-to-day -day basis inside of the high school and elementary school, um, which we do a lot of groundwork and footwork in the Bronzeville community. And our youth are really, 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 um, we've seen an uptick and spike in drug and substance abuse use um, over the past, I'll say, maybe three or four years. Um, when we hear about drug abuse, a lot of times people often think marijuana, pills, crack, cocaine, but a lot of our youth don't know that alcohol is a form of substance abuse as well, too. So um, a lot of drinking can occur going on at an early age, and we're always trying to use um, preventive measures to encourage our youth to not stray down that um, path and get involved with using those type of drug abuse forms. So most of the teenagers in the nation... Um, who use drug abuse may incur some major public health risks and things of that nature, Ms. Tyler. And the government collects a lot of facts and reports on these type of things and a lot of statistics. And the research shows that about 50% of high school seniors will openly admit that they are abusing drugs and that another surprise is 60% of those youth um, reports give that they were given those drugs by a fellow student or peer. So how, what do you think about those numbers when you hear those alarming rates, Ms. Tyler? Um, it's really surprising and it just tells us that we have to be more aware of what our students and our kids are doing while they're away at school. Absolutely. Um, we just have to make sure that we keep an open line of contact with them as teachers, mentors, Parents, just make sure that you're talking to your kids. Sure, and that's always important. We want to make sure that we keep that open line of communication with the youth because it's very important that you can be able to talk to them and listen to some of their valid concerns and things that they have to say. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have a caller. Go ahead, caller. Yes, yes. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Thanks for calling in. You have a question or comment? Hey, believe me, it's my pleasure. Thank you. It gets me is that you young ladies up there have great, great ideas, but none of them are going to work. And you know why? I'm going to tell you. All the aldermen, all the congressmen that we vote in every four years do nothing for Chicago about drugs. And nothing's going to be done from the bottom up. It's got to come from the bottom, uh, top down. The only if these all women and, and people would get off their butts and start, you know, legislation about Chicago. So, Absolutely. Uh, you, know, I, I, you know, but but we go there all, every every four years and we put it back in and they know that. Yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah, but you know what gets me? You know what gets me? You got three big construction sites going on. Not one Hispanic, not one African-American, 
construction company are on them. That's why our people are, uh, go to drugs. We can't get a job. And we got plenty and plenty of good people out there to go get, you know, to, to go to work. That's what I wanted to say and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Colin, for that comment. Um, I will say that, though, that um, we have had this um, alarming problem, and it has plagued our neighborhoods and our communities for quite some time. And um, that's a valid concern and point that you made about um, local aldermen and uh, government officials and mayors and people who are uh, have political ties who you may feel that may not do as much as a contribution that they possibly could to combat some of the drugs and get some of these things off of the streets. Um, Unfortunately, I'd say in my personal opinion that I believe that um, drugs is a huge marketing money business. I mean, it's business. Drug abuse and using substances and drugs and things of that nature, it equates to crime. Crime equates to, you know, prison, hospitals, things of that nature. So it is like... Um, a revolving circle um, of how it kind of like feeds the machine and uh, keeps a lot of business thriving. Uh, funeral homes, things of that nature, all of that stuff, it kind of all intertwines and circle back. So don't want to just holistically put it on government officials and the aldermen. Um, at one point, we do have to take some onus and start getting out here and combating some of the issues that are at hand um, as a community and as a whole ourselves. Um, so just to speak to that, I mean, I'll talk about, you know, some of the things that Centers for New Horizons is doing um, and some preventative measures that we take to make sure that some of our youth um, don't attribute to these high alarm statistics that we are reading off to you guys today. So, Ms. Tyler, could you go ahead and elaborate on some of the things that you do with the youth at uh, Phillips High School to keep them um, on a positive track and engaged in programming and making sure that they don't succumb to uh, being involved with drug abuse or drug addiction or things of that nature. Yes. Well, one of the main key things that students can do is to get involved with extracurricular activities. Absolutely. So, meaning basketball, sports, um, home economics, anything that's going to keep them busy um, throughout the school day. Yes. Also, after-school programs. We have an amazing program called Teen Reach House at Phillips High School after school for a grades yes. of all levels. And with this program, we teach them about the importance of not engaging in peer pressure, such as drugs and sex at an early age, teen pregnancy. Um, we offer them a lot of different information for college mm -hmm. workshops, just everything that can keep them out of trouble after school. Because after school, kids have a lot of leisure time. They may, not, yes. they may be home by themselves. So just making sure that your student is involved after school with either an, extra, an extracurricular or an after-school program, such as Teen Reach. Absolutely. So that's a really good, great program. Um, is that program exclusive to only students that are inside of Phillips High School, or can outside students from anywhere in the city come? Um, for this particular program, it's housed at Phillips, but Teen Reach is throughout Chicago. Okay. So some ways that you may can get involved if you're not... And uh, a student at Phillips or you're not in the Bronzeville area, you maybe can try to go um, online and try to do some research and find out what Teen Reach program is in your local area or neighborhood because they are throughout the city of Chicago. So I want to go ahead and back up a minute because we started talking about that communication piece before that caller called in. And I want to just think that this that, that's really key for parents, for mentors, for counselors, um, teachers, anybody that provides any key role model role or um, assistance to a youth is that that line of communication is crucial and it's key and it has to be open because sometimes I just remember it's going back to my teen years uh, where it was times where I could have been possibly terrified of my mother and it could have been something that I may have possibly wanted to share with her regarding a sensitive topic like drugs or alcohol or things of that nature and you know I might have questions or concerns it may have been presented to me by another student or another youth and I want to get more information from my mom and then I would know that it, you know it wouldn't be open armed or well received like well why are you asking this type of stuff why do you want to know this what's going on are you on drugs you know that type of thing so just keeping an open mind and an open ear 
and making sure that you be very open and clear and honest and thorough with them when your youth does want to reach out to you and communicate and be upfront with you about some things that are going on. Um, don't judge or, you know, slander them or knock them. Um, if they do express that they've used these type of things, you know, um, let's try to get them the necessary help and be open and communicate with them um, a positive light in the way things we can try to turn the situation around. So once again, please remember, we are a live show. We're Centers for New Horizons. We're located at 4150 South King Drive. Our website is www.cnh.org. There it is right there. If you want more additional information, you can check out the website. All of our stuff is located under the youth development piece. And make sure that you call us live at 312 right now. 312-738-1060 if you have any questions, comments, or concerns right now while we're going. So, it's also said to us that about 71% of the high school seniors um, have used alcohol as well, too. So, with that being said, sadly, research lets us know that teenagers who drink are 50% more likely to use a stronger substance abuse, like possibly cocaine or some pills or different things of that nature. So, a lot of trends we're seeing right now um, while being in the schools because times have changed and it might uh, be new drugs and things of that nature coming on. I know a lot of the youth are experiencing dibble and dabbling with... Um, Percocins and uh, Molly's and uh, what are some of the other ones, Miss Tyler, that um, you that you may hear around on a daily basis? Lean, uh, lean, pills. yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the promethazine. So what I'm trying to express and just always let the kids know is that. Um, if you are going to, which we do not encourage at any time, make sure you do your research on these yes. medications and these pills and these things that you guys are taking and taking into your body because they can cause very detrimental and deadly effects to you mentally and physically. And then a lot of people are mixing a lot of things because um, some of these pills and substances have um, upper effects on you and then some of them have downer effects on you. So um, for those who may not know what that means, some of them may take some sort of drug or a substance that makes them feel very hyper or active or giddy and energetic and just speedballing and your heartbeat is racing and you're just up and giddy and then other other substances may make you feel a little bit lower and slow you down and you might be calmer you might be tired and you might be restless and then now they're mixing them so emotions are just running high crisscross all over the place now which we can see some of these substance abuse problems attributing to some of the alarming um Crime rates that we're seeing all across yeah. and throughout the city. Um, so what are some things that we could do, Miss Tyler, to uh, encourage you to not use... Oh, wait. It looks like we have a caller. Caller? Yes. Um, I want to know what parents can do or if their involvement um, can impact um, or students to combat um, even taking the change um, in activities that are counterproductive to their, hopefully, their goals. Okay. Um, thank you for that question. So parents should um, be very attentive to the youth. Once again, we mentioned that communication piece. Talk to the youth. See what the youth likes, what the youth would like to get involved with. Um, listen to them. Don't overpress your views or your decisions on the youth or on the child itself. Let them have um, open dialogue and creative expression and vision and whatever it is that they decide that they want to do. Watch your children. Pay attention. Make sure that they're not exhibiting any alarming behavior like um, sleeping all of the time, want to start missing school. Watch the crowds and the circles that they hang out with. That's very key and very important because we're going to get to that and talk about how a lot of peer pressure is influencing a lot of this substance abuse and drug abuse that we're seeing in these alarming statistics that we're talking about. So just mindful of that. Being in the, involved 
involved in the loop with your child's teachers, with their friends, um, with their church members, or whatever it is that your child likes to do, make sure that you are actively involved and engaged with them. And then research some options. So let's just say that you know, because I know a lot of my parents are busy and working um, to provide um, financially for the youth. So sometimes that may cause um, a gap or a lack in uh, how you had mentioned, Ms. Tyler, in supervision. If a parent is working a lot and is not able to be attentive when the kid is out of school. So researching some different extracurriculum activities, um, you could go to cnh.org and see what programs it is that we have to offer. You can look on you know, the YMCA site and see what they have. Check out Park District site. Get your kid in after school matters. Present some things. Find out what they like. If they don't like what you present and then research some things where they say, hey, I'm into music. I don't really want to do that dance thing. Then find some music programs and get them involved and stuff. The more extracurriculum activities that they're in, the less likely that they are to be involved in something that has a negative impact on them. So um, that would be my advice to some of the parents out there to uh, get their kids engaged in things and just make sure that they stay open-minded, let the kid have suggestions and input in, it, in what it is that they want to do, and then just be open and don't let them feel like they have to be closed off when it comes to communicating with you. Um, so that would be my suggestion. So back to um, the youth and the whole peer pressure aspect, because um, I see a lot of this on a day-to-day -day basis while, while working with the youth. Um, what are some things that you can do to like combat peer pressure uh, or being offered some type of drugs or things of that nature? Um, definitely checking their friends, like letting them know that what they're presenting to them is not right. Yes. Um, letting them know that just say no to drugs. So yes. the problem can't be fixed until a youth tell their friend that no, that's not right. We aren't supposed to be smoking drugs right now. So just okay. making sure that the child is able to confront peer pressure by letting them know that it's wrong. Um, not giving into it because peer pressure can't be fixed until somebody says no. That's the only way it can get fixed is if they reject it. If you continue to accept it, continue to try to fit in with the in crowd, then we're going to forever have peer pressure problems. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And just letting people know, you know, you can be an individual. You can be yourself. Mm -hmm. You can have freedom of speech. You don't have to do what everybody else does or what everybody else think is cool. You could be a trendsetter to make it cool not to, to do drugs <laughs> or don't do substance abuse. I mean, as cliche as that saying is, and we know how it all sounds because we heard it before a thousand times, Say no to drugs. I mean, drugs are just, they're not good for you. They do a lot of health damaging things to you, you know, mentally and physically. And I wanted to attribute to that because I'll say that um, communication needs to be key. A lot of you who express to me and say that they might be using some sort of substance or alcohol, um really have a lot of emotional um, things going on with them internally. A lot of our youth we see on a day-to-day -day basis um, are affected um, by the trauma and things and the violence that are going on in the city right now. So a lot of them aren't getting the necessary help per se that they may need and they're walking around with a lot of grief and trauma mm -hmm. and they are not getting the proper counseling or talking to somebody or having an open line of communication about how they feel inside. So they're turning to these drugs as coping mechanisms, um, which it doesn't do anything. It might make them feel good short term, but um, long term, it's doing just detrimental damage to them. Um, and then you can might get yourself into something thinking it's cool to smoke some marijuana or drink a drink and then go out and do something that's harmful to yourself or somebody else and then get yourself in just a whirlwind of long-standing trouble um, because your vision and your thoughts are impaired when you're influenced by a substance. So you might not make the proper decision when presented with any type of rash situation. So those are things that you always want to be mindful of um, before you get yourself involved in some of that stuff. So when kids um, int are introduced at school age, you know, and they're introduced to new friends and different social trends, they'll get to try new stuff. Um, 
which is totally normal. Everybody has to go through their own life experiences and challenges to grow and uh, experience some things for themselves and know that, hey, maybe I tried that one time. That's not cool. It's not for me. Um, and then they can go ahead and be an advocate and share out and share that with some of their friends. Um, so how do you go about um, advising a youth who may come to you and who's open to you, Miss Tyler, and tell you, hey, I've had a problem, I've used a couple of drugs or things of this nature. What is some advice or what do you go about telling them to do for next step if they openly, you know, make a, a statement that they want to change or stop using those drugs? Um, well, the first thing is to just let them know that they did the first step by admitting it, by actually yes. coming to an, an adult and let them know that they feel like they have a problem. Um, the next thing would be to just talk to them, not judging them, trying to get a deeper understanding of what's going yes. on. Maybe they have troubles at home. Maybe it's, they're getting bullied at school. It's always a reason why. Um, the next thing would be just to have them to find another adult that they trust. Maybe there's a school counselor or a teacher or a parent, yes. an older sibling, a family member, someone that can get them to the next step, so maybe entering a program. Just someone that can give them more assistance to helping them cope with their problem. Yes, yeah, so those will be great resources and ideas to share with the youth who come and open up and express things to you. Once again, remember, we're live. You can call us for Centers for New Horizons, 312-738-1060. We're also located at 4150 South King Drive. And our telephone number directly to Centers is 773 373 5700. So just to talk about, because a lot of kids have a lack of knowledge and they're informed, so they think that this stuff is cool and that, oh, I'm young, I got plenty of time, and they don't realize the effects that some of these drugs that they are taking can have on them. Um, so like I mentioned about that social-emotional piece, it will provide them with um, difficult gauge or lack of being able to control their emotions. Um, they can lose positive relationships with their positive friends. So they may do have positive people in a circle that's around them and then they might step back and say, well, hey, I don't want to smoke that or I don't want to drink that or I don't pop pills. So we can't hang. We're not cool because we're not going down the same path or we don't do the same things. And they can lose that positive influence and that'll in turn cause them to hang out with more negative people mm -hmm. and have a more negative connotation on them. So those are some things. Um, also, losing a lack of trust from your family and from your peers. I know we mentioned having that open dialogue with the parent or whoever your parent or guardian may be, whether it's your mom, your dad, your sister, auntie, uncle, cousin, grandma, granddad. Um, there was a lack, there'll probably be a lack of trust because they'll probably be scared and they'll probably feel like they can't trust you. Um, don't let that deter or discourage you, though, from opening up to people. Um, what else is another thing that could possibly happen? Um, poor planning and poor judgment. Um, you just make poor decisions when you're off of it. And then long internal damage to um, your body and your organs. Things will start failing. You can damage your lungs from smoking. You could damage a kidney or something like that from drinking. And we want our youth around for a long time because our children are literally the future, as cliche as it may sound. So if you're watching and you need more additional information, make sure that you come to us at www.cnh.org or you give us a phone call or you call in. We're here every Wednesday, every evening at 5 p.m. And we'd like to thank you guys for tuning in with us. If you have more questions for myself or Ms. Tyler about drug prevention measures, after school programming, um, activities, and different things to get your kids involved in, we're here um, for suggestions and comments. If you had any of that stuff and needed some help or guidance with your youth, or if you needed treatment programs, we do not do or offer any in-house treatment, we do offer prevention measures, so we can also refer you to the proper resources if you needed those as well, too. So once again, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in with us on Small Talks for Centers, and have a great evening. Thank you so much.